Hi everyone. I've been using the Fatava 16iZ and the CGY 760 combination now for two years and really, really enjoying it. Um, I want to create a video to share my transmitter setup when paired up with the CGY. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about the transmitter is that it's a full featured transmitter, you know, allowing me to use it with airplanes, the micro helis, etc. And that has a lot of flexibility. Um, the inverse of that is, and one of the challenges that I found is that that flexibility makes it a little bit challenging to learn how to use it, as well as gives you, you know, multiple ways to, to configure things. So, you know, when I first got the combination, the first thing I did was watch Nick Maxwell's video on setting up the 16iZ and CGY 760, which was super helpful and got me going. Highly recommend if you haven't watched it to go look for that. Um, I used that his setup for a while and then, you know, set out to make the setup a little bit easier, a little bit more user friendly for for the way I wanted to use it. And ultimately what I've created is a, a template, which is just a dummy model um, that I, I create the model, save it onto the, the transmitter here. And then when I'm going to set up a new uh, helicopter, I just copy that model over, rename it, and the transmitter side's all ready to go. And all I have to focus on or configure is the, the CGY. So it makes setting up a new model really quick and, quick and easy and takes, uh, you know, uh, some of the, the you know, challenges of the radio, the transmitter side out of the equation. Uh, my goal is going to be to create three videos. Today, I'm just going to do a quick video showing, you know, some of the key features of the template, kind of the switch assignments, some of the menus I use, uh, etc. And then I'll do a second video where I'll do a step-by-step -step, um, of setting up the template, go through, you know, how, you know, how to create it and, you know, why I did what I did, what have you. And then I'll do a third video to, um, show how to set up telemetry on the 16iZ with both a Scorpion ESC as well as a Hobbywing ESC. Um, before jumping into it, I think it's worth doing a quick review of the architecture of a 16iZ and the CGY. Um, there are going to be two parts that need to be set up. Uh, one is the transmitter side, which is what I'm going to be showing today and creating, and that's what that template's for. So you just do that one time and you're you're good to go. And then the second is the CGY. Um, and that's where you will set that up every time you set up a new model. Um, the other thing that's worth noting is when you pair up the 16iZ with the CGY, you can program the CGY completely from the transmitter. The initial configuration is performed with a wired connection, and that's to do the baseline gyro configuration. So things like the direction of the gyro, rudder endpoints, the cyclic neutrals, things like that. And then for all of the flight tuning parameters, that would be done through the wireless integration at the field. So works. I found that to work really, really well for myself. Um, the other thing that I, I want to hit on is flight conditions because I found this a little confusing when I first started using uh, the Fataba combination. Uh, so you will have transmitter flight conditions. So your idle up one, two, three, hold. And then you also have flight conditions on the CGY itself. The CGY supports five different flight conditions, which can be mapped to uh, your transmitter flight conditions. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. But in the case of my template, I am only using one of the CGY flight conditions. And that flight condition is where you set up your, your rotation, your style, your tail pirouette rate, things like that. I set up one. Um, it works really well for my particular model, as well as the head speeds that I'm running. And then the other thing is that this particular template that I've created is really geared towards a 3D electric model uh, using the internal governor of the ESC. So right now I do have my model uh, plugged in. The motor wires are disconnected for safety reasons. Um, so, oops. So with the transmitter, um, I'm gonna start with my, my switch assignments. Um, so if, what I would say is fairly conventional. Uh, my right hand switch here is my um, hold switch, if you will. I have three flight uh, settings there. When it's all the way forward towards me, it's in the kill fl uh, transmitter flight condition. This is motors off, 
the model is safe to handle, uh, et cetera. If I go into the middle position, that's my hold position, or um, in my case, I have it uh, set up as a auto bailout, so I can recover from a botched auto, uh, et cetera. And then all the way back puts me into my idle up flight conditions. So on the right hand, uh, left hand side, all the way back is idle up one, middle is idle up two, forward is idle up three. So I think very conventional setup there. Uh, what I've added to this is a safety switch. So in addition to kill this switch here, if I put this into uh, enable that, what that does is when I'm going out to the flight line, I make sure both of these are forward. And that allows me to go out there, you know, with a peace of mind that if I actually bump my hold switch, um, that the motor won't spool up. So if I actually flip this, it goes into safety. So this overrides um, that switch if it is uh, enabled. So to me, peace of mind right there. The other thing I've done with the safety switch is it's a three position. So uh, the middle position and the all the way forward position uh, towards me uh, is in safety. If I pull it all the way to me, it will also call out my battery, my main battery voltage. I have a bad habit of putting a used battery into my model. So I use this as a way to know what my battery voltage is um, of my main pack as I'm going out. So I'll show you the example. 45.4 volt. Being it's a 12S pack, I would expect that to be you know plus uh, 50 volts. And it'll repeat this alarm or this message rather every 30 seconds. So this has saved me quite a few times now uh, by having that enabled. So that's my, my switch assignments. Um, the, uh, then, you know, when you look at the menus, you have this linkage menu, you have two, two pages of things that you can uh, configure under your model uh, menu. You have, again, another whole page of things. It can be rather daunting, and honestly, you're not using most of this. So what Futaba has created is a, a user menu uh, shortcut, if you will, that allows you to uh, put on a menu the most used or the things that you want access to. To get to that, I push this you know menu button over here, and this is my user menu. So I assigned these five menus to it. These are the only five that I use on a regular basis. So it saves me a lot of time and kind of um, removes a lot of the complexity of the transmitter. So let me start with my throttle curve. Uh, normally, your throttle curve, you're going to have, uh, when it comes out of the box, it's a five-point pitch curve, um, et cetera. And when you want to create a, a flat line, you have to go to each point. What I did is I just went with a, a straight line, so it's just two points. And then I use an offset to change that. So if I go into my auto bailout, auto, it's set for plus 30 per my ESC manual. If I want to change that, I don't have to go to the two endpoints and change them. I just go to my offset and I can just quickly change it. So nice, quick, quick and easy. Um, so that makes life really easy. And you know, you go into each of your, your different idle ups, same thing, just use that this offset to, to change that. For a pitch, pitch curve, given that this is a, my 3D model, um, I use the same pitch curve for all of my my flight conditions. So what I've done then is I have this one um, curve mapped to everything. And if I change this, and it's very similar, so if I, I have just two points, so I removed it, usually would be a five point, removed all the points, and I'm just using the two points. If I wanted to say this was too much pitch, that was giving me 13 and a half degrees or what have you, I can just go to one rate, and I can just drop that down. All good, all right? And then what that does is it copies it to all of my, my conditions. So I don't have to go in and change each one independently. So that makes it, again, really convenient for uh, my particular setup. All right. And then uh, this gyro menu. This is my uh, CGY gains. The way I've set this up is uh, rate one is idle up one, rate two is idle up two, rate three is idle up three. The advantage of doing it this way is that I can see all of them on one screen without having to switch uh, into the idle up. 
So again, makes it really easy. Normally when I have to change my gain, since my head speeds are somewhat similar, if I'm changing gain on idle up three as an example, I can, I can just change two right then and there really quick. So that was a suit, uh, very convenient for me. Uh, gyro settings, um, this is the way that you would uh, get into the CGY wirelessly with, through the wireless integration. Right now it's reading configurations. I'm gonna go into the wireless tuning. This is where I can go through and do all my wireless tuning. So really easy. Uh, I will note, I mentioned that the CGY has uh, five flight conditions. I'm only using condition one, C1. Uh, I, again, I use the same condition for all of my transmitter flight, idle up one, idle up two, and, and hold. Seems to work really well for me. <clears throat> and then um, lastly, let me get into telemetry. I'm gonna skip that telemetry for a second. Um, you do also have uh, a shortcut a shortcut for for your telemetry data. So similar to that that menu for my most used uh, menu items, they have the same thing for telemetry. So I hit my home home key over here, and that brings up my uh, key telemetry data that I've defined I want to look at. So in my particular case, I'm looking at my battery uh, pack voltage, RPM capacity used. I have an alarm set against that. So when I use X amount of capacity, it raises an alarm. I know I need to land and I like to keep an eye on my ESC temperature. Um, in addition, if you want to get into uh, some of the other telemetry, you can go into the telemetry menu. So in this case, this is the receiver battery voltage um, coming from the BEC. I have an alarm set up since I'm using a UltraGuard battery backup. When I lose my BEC voltage, this will drop a half a volt and, and raise an alarm. So I'll make sure that just disconnected my main battery. You can see that the voltage Warning. dropped. Battery 6.7 volt. So there you heard the alarm kicked in. I know that there's a problem uh, with my, my BEC. Plugged it back in, it's back up to 7.2 7, uh, volts. If I go over to my Scorpion uh, telemetry, this is where I can uh, look at all of the uh, metrics that they have available. There's other things that are available that I didn't put on my, my shortcut screen. Uh, but the other thing I've done is for the discharge, like I said, I set up an alarm there so that when I've used X amount of capacity, um, it'll raise an alarm. <clears throat> So that's at a high level, my setup. The other thing is those that already are familiar with uh, the Fataba system, normally to change, say, a throttle curve uh, in idle up two, um, you would need to be in that condition in order to change it. So if I go back to my throttle curve, so right now I'm in idle up one. If I want to change two, I actually have to be in it. Um, when the model is all plugged in, like I mentioned, my motor wires are disconnected, uh, the motor will be spooling up. So what Futaba has created is um, this condition hold right here. Um, normally, it's tied to your normal mode, which in Futaba world wouldn't be this all the way back. I've remapped it to be only when my kill is enabled. So... I would normally want to be in my my kill whenever I'm manipulating the model, right? Kill to me is my my um, it's safe to touch the model. So before going into condition hold, I will make sure I'm in kill and I'll turn my safety on. And then you can hit the switch. You'll hear the beep, which means it's safe to change your fl transmitter flight conditions. I'll go back into my throttle curve and now I can uh, manipulate any of the throttle curves and not be be concerned um so we'll get back out of this go back and put this safety voltage um, 31.4 you'll notice with the gyro I, again i created it where we'll go back to it real quick that i could see it all normally um and there's a side reason for why i did this outside of being able to do all of them really easily is i don't have to go in that flight condition uh, hold in order to manipulate these. So it was a nice, I'll call it workaround to have some, some flexibility of um, configuring all of my gains with it. So the only time I ever really need to use this 
flight condition hold is my throttle curve. So again, makes it you know one less thing to worry about from my perspective, and I think makes it a little bit safer because I'm not in that condition hold all that often playing around with my, my switches. So that's a, a super high level overview of how I have it set up. Hopefully uh, you found this somewhat interesting. Uh, if you did, please you know, drop me a note. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, also motivate me to get the next video going pretty quickly and get that out to everyone. So with that, I appreciate it um, and uh, talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much.